Hi guys. Oh, cheers. It's time for another, it's time to talk about brewing again. Okay, this time we're going to talk about the hydrometer. Um, I've been, I promised a video like this uh, a couple years ago, I think. I finally uh, got around to it. Okay, hydrometers. What is it? Why do you need it? What does it do? Um, <clears throat> it's a good idea for you to have a hydrometer. What it is, it's a, it's a way of measuring the specific gravity of your beer. Um, I'll just hold it up to the camera a little bit there so you can see it. Uh, it's a glass, a hollow glass tube with a weight at the bottom. Okay, and when you put it, when you float it in your, your brew, uh, it has a scale on the side that um, has numbers on it that tells you the specific gravity. All right. Now, why do you want to do this? One thing it does for you is it tells you how much alcohol is going to be in your brew. Um, second thing it will do for you is it will let you know when your brew is finished fermenting and ready to either siphon to a secondary or bottle. Um, you know, normally you could just watch your airlock and when it slows down or stops, you know that it's ready to, to, to bottle. Um, but there are times when you need to have a more accurate uh, way of telling, uh, when you need to, you know, have it at a certain uh, specific gravity uh, so that you know when to, when to rack it into a secondary carboy. Okay, so you need to have, if you're doing wine especially, you kind of need to have one of these beer, not so much, but it's good, still good to have it because I've had people uh, send me messages where their airlock's not doing any, anything. Um, and they think it's fermenting, they look inside and there's lots of foam and bubbles inside, but they don't know what's going on, they don't know if it's fermenting or not. The first thing I tell them is, get a hydrometer. Wait the six or seven days for it to <clears throat> ferment, and then do a hydrometer test. If the reading is appropriate for a, a brew that's been fermented fully, you know you can bottle. So it's a good tool to have, and it's a good thing to know how to use. It's not difficult to use, by any means. Um, it's almost like just using a thermometer. All right, and you don't have to know every single number on here and what it's for and what it does. How do you use a hydrometer? Well, um, you what you do is you take a reading before you pitch your yeast. So when you got everything all mixed together, your wort is all done and ready to go. Before you put your yeast in, you want to drop your hydrometer in and take a reading and you write that reading down. And I'll give you an idea what the readings are going to be for certain kinds of, for we a beer or wine or whatever. Usually in the instructions will tell you uh, what to expect as well. So you'll have that reading written down and then when you when you think your fermentation is finished, you'll take, you'll t put it in and take another reading and you can compare the two and you'll know, okay, yep, that's the appropriate reading for uh, a finished uh, brew. Now I can go ahead and bottle it or, or do whatever you have to do with it. Okay. So that's why you do it, and that's how you use it, and when you use it. Um, if you're not sure whether your brew is fermenting for some reason, like maybe your airlock has a crack in it, or um, you, uh, your, your, your fermenter's not properly sealed for some reason, your airlock's not active, you'll need to use one of these to check to see if your fermentation is actually working. Okay? Now, um, noisy pipes. <laughs> anyway, so... Here, how do you use it? Right, well I've told you when to use it and uh, we're just going to take a, a look at, uh, a close look at it right now. I've got uh, some, gra uh, some pictures here to, sh to better show you uh, what I'm talking about. Um, here is the scale that you're going to use to measure the specific gravity. Now you might say to yourself, what is specific gravity? What, why do we, you know, what, what, how does this work? Why is it different at the beginning of fermentation than it is at the end of fermentation? Well, what you're basically doing when you drop this in your beer or your wine is you're measuring the, the amount of sugar or the amount of dissolvable uh, substances in your, in your beer or wine. So to, just to take an example, um, if you take a boat, like a sailboat, and you put it in, um, uh, you put it in the uh, clear water lake and you wait for the water to settle down and you draw a line around where the water sits on the side of the boat take that same boat, drop it into the ocean where you've got salt water now, and do the same thing, and you're going to find that the lines are in different locations. The boat will float higher in the salt water than it will in the non-salt water, you see? 
So it's all about buoyancy. And that's how this thing works, because you've got a weight in the bottom that pulls it down, but you've got a, an air cavity here that keeps it afloat. So it's just like a boat, right? <sighs> so I hope that's not uh, going to embarrass me in the future, but that's the best analogy, I, that's the best comparison I could come up with. So that scale there is the one that you're going to use to test your specific gravity. When you um, make beer, your specific gravity reading before you pitch your yeast will probably be somewhere around uh, uh, 1.040, okay? Water has a specific gravity of 1.000, so it's based on pure water, all right? Uh, 1.000 is water, and as you add your malt extract, your sugars, your substances, you're increasing the specific gravity, and you're going to end up somewhere around 1.040 or 1040, we don't always say the point. Um, if you're making wine, wine has more sugars in the beginning because you're gonna have more alcohol. So wine usually ends up somewhere around anywhere between 1.070, 1.090, somewhere in that range. It depends on the type of wine you're making and how strong it's gonna be. And if you're making some sort of spirits, you're even gonna end up with higher readings. I'm not sure what they're gonna be. Um, so this is the beginning of, 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 the, of the procedure before you put your yeast in. At the end of the procedure of whatever you're making, whether it's beer or wine or, or anything else, you're going to have more, you're going to have a more cleaning, reading that's more close to 1.000. In fact, the more alcohol your um, beverage has in it, for instance, wine or even something stronger like uh, uh, liqueur or, beer or uh, spirits, um, then your reading might actually be below 1.000 and the, the, the hydrometer might actually drop down into and sink down and I'll, I'll show you that in a little while uh, what I mean by that because alcohol has a less tendency to create buoyancy than water does so if you swam in a pool of alcohol you'd probably drown because you wouldn't be able to keep yourself up now let's see how you do it all right I've got some water here I put some food coloring in it to try and simulate the color of beer I know I'm a bit of a buddy daddy all right, well, let's, okay, the best way, now, there's two things you can do. You can drop this straight into your, into your brew, and when you do that, you give it a little twirl so that it just lodges any bubbles that might be at the bottom here that might push it up and give you a false reading. Or you can take some of your brew, whether it, through a wine thief or some other method, just make sure everything's sanitized, and you can fill it into this thing. This is wet inside. That's why it looks kind of foggy. I washed it just before I, just before the video. By the way, this beer that I'm drinking now is the picture that you saw at the beginning of the video. That was this beer, and it tastes great. Cooper's Real Ale is what I'm drinking right now. Homebrew. Oh, it's so good. If you're gonna do it in one of these, the best thing for you to do is put the hydrometer in first, and then pour in your, in your, your, your beverage, because you, then you'll know how high to fill it, because you say you fill it to here, then you drop this thing and it's going to overflow. You won't know which how to much to put in. So put this in first, and then pour in your beer. Let's see how close I got to the color of wort. That's kind of fluorescent, but anyway. So as soon as it stops, starts to float, right there, you stop. Okay. So what you do, and you can see how low that is. Now I've got another camera here that I'm going to use to uh, let you see close up. I hope. There. Yeah. Okay, so there it's, it's sitting. You can turn the, the tube around and just get so you can see. I can't even see. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a, there we go. 1.000 and it's sitting right at 1.000. Now, but, but, you know, uh, this is water, so that's what it's supposed to be. There are a couple of things that um, can affect the reading. Let's just, let's just talk about that for a second. One of them is temperature. Um, if the water's cooler or warmer, it'll affect your reading. You know what? It's very, very little. The effect of temperature on your specific gravity reading, unless you're making rocket fuel or something, it really, it's uh, not that crucial. I mean, if you want to be really, really accurate, you can get calculators or software that will help you calculate what the specific gra gravity reading really is, 
taking in, in taking into consideration the temperature of your of your ward. Um, but I, there's other things that, that are more concerning, I think, than that because that's minor. The one thing that is important when you're using your your hydrometer is how where you read where you read it. In other words, you know, water has a tendency to climb up on the sides of things when when it's against them. So with a hydrometer, you kind of end up with something like this. And so where do you read it? You know, do you read it up here? Or do you read it down here? Well, this is the level of the water. This is the level of the brew. This is just the reaction that it has when it comes up against things. That means nothing. Just because it decides it's going to hug up against your hydrometer doesn't mean that you're going to read it here. You need to be reading it at the bottom, the base of this little phenomenon here, always. I learned that in science class back in high school, and I think it's probably the only thing I remember from that time. <laughs> okay, so you saw the reading there. It's 1.000. We're going to take that out of the way, and we're going to grab some sugar. So this would be what your reading would be more or less when your fermentation is done. If you're making beer, it might read 1.008, and that's fine. That's your target for when you're making beer. That's what you want to see right before you bottle your beer. Okay, so 1.040 at the beginning and 1.008 at the end. Or, you know, 1040 at the beginning and 1008 at the end, however you want to say it. Just trying to go through the basics at first here, then I'll go through, we'll play around a little bit at the end. That way if you get, you can turn it off if, you, if you're not interested in that it's other stuff. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, let's, let's um, take the hydrometer out. And let's put in, um, I don't know, a bunch of sugar. There's about two, there's about a tablespoon there. Another tablespoon. Oh, come on, you little brat. There. Okay, let's take that out of the way. Let me all spill that all over the place. I'm just going to give it a little shake. Because it's all that. Okay. Take the thermometer, uh, the hydrometer. Let's grab the camera. A moment of truth here. What's it going to read? All right, here we go. Okay. Give it a twirl. And you can see already that it's way higher. There's the 1.000 mark. So it's way higher than it was. It's actually sitting at about uh, 1.054. And you've got these little incremental spaces in between that are going to allow you to to read it, you know, in between the uh, increments of 10. So I'm going to try to turn it just around a little, just to coax it around so we can see. Yeah, you can see that I'm I'm reading it at the base of that little crest thing that water likes to do when it's against stuff. So by adding the sugar to the solution, that's what we get. We get a more buoyant situation here. And the more sugar you add, the higher this thing is going to float up. Okay? And the more alcohol you're going to have. Because now, if we look again, I forgot to mention on the other side of the hydrometer, there is another scale. This is your alcohol content. And this is telling you what, how much alcohol you're going to have in your brew. Now, this is only can be used before you put your yeast in. Okay, This, this is not going to work at the end when you're ready to bottle. Before you spread, put your yeast in your, your uh, brew, you're going to look at this measure. And you're going you're gonna to get an approximation, give or take 1% maybe, uh, of your alcohol. So let's see if we can get what this is going to be and just let it go around. So this is going to have about 7% alcohol. And I say about because we got that little crest. But you know, approximately 7. This isn't a, a tried and true method of telling because when you ferment it down to the top here, 
it might not end up exactly at zero. So there'd be a little bit of a loss there. But you're looking at about 7% alcohol in this particular solution. And quite frankly, if you were to f ferment this, put some yeast in this, and put an airlock on top here, it would ferment. And you would get a 7% alcohol beverage that you could drink, although with the food coloring it, I don't know if I would. Um, but yeah, you could put sugar and water together and make alcohol. It tastes like crap but you could actually do it. I have another hydrometer. This one is a mess, this tube, because I put rubbing alcohol in it to, to um, prepare for this video, and it made it all, I don't know if you can see that, made it all like that, but this one's cracked and everything, it's leaks and that, so I don't use it anyway, so that's okay. And I've got another hydrometer here, and what I'm gonna do so I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol, so pure alcohol, and you're not going to drink this, of course. And we're going to we're going to pour it in. Hopefully, there about about there is good. Let's see what kind of a reading we get here. All right, what is what how, what's the specific gravity of alcohol? Pure alcohol. Ready? See? Right to the bottom. Because there's so much alcohol in here, it just sinks right down to the bottom. Um, that's why when you make wine, uh, the specific gravity reading when it's done form uh, fermenting is below 1.000. And uh, because there's so much more alcohol in wine than there is in beer. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching and. Um, I hope that helps. I hope that gets the hydrometer thing out of the way. Thanks a lot for watching. More brewing videos are going to come up. And um, until then, cheers. Oh. See ya. Actually, this is the second attempt at this video. Uh, I'd recorded it last night too and I wasn't happy with it. But at the end of the video, I got up to turn the camera off and uh, something happened. Uh, but I was laughing so hard watching this thing because it's just the way it happened, you know. I just it's just the way, you know, I'm coming through and I could feel it hitting me on the rear end and then I tried to reach down with my hand and it just it all went down and it went all over the carpet when I was actually playing it back I still had the camera set up here I was laughing so hard I just turned on the camera and I just recorded a bit of it <laughs> that happened after I No, we're not spilling it this time.